Yes, if 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 by good you mean thirty hours long, <laughs> yeah, I had a wonderful trip back. Welcome to the Active Marketer Podcast, where we talk about how to design, automate, and scale your business to the next level using sales and marketing automation. You can find out all the tips, tactics, and techniques you need to get more customers and sell more stuff over at theactivemarketer.com. Now, here's your host, Barry Moore. Hello and welcome back, everybody, to episode 20 of the Active Marketer Podcast. I'm your host, Barry Moore. I just want to take this opportunity to uh, let everybody know I really appreciate you listening and all the questions you're sending in and all the iTunes reviews you leave for us. Really do appreciate that. We're trying to pack these episodes full of value so you can go away and implement this stuff in your business. Uh, And it's glad to see it's resonating with some of you. If it has been successful with you and you like the information we're dishing out, please, by all means, share that with uh, other people. The more we spread the word, uh, the more people can take advantage of some of these tactics to grow their business. This week, we're going to change gears a little bit from marketing automation to sales funnels. There's a funnel hacking event coming up at the end of May in Las Vegas, and I'll be attending there, soak in all the funnel building knowledge. So I thought we might talk about a little bit about that on the show. Sales funnels uh, are a nice buzzword, and, and there's a million different ways you can craft your sales funnel from just straight emails, you know, following up an opt-in to crazy upsells, downsells, cross-sells, all that kind of groovy stuff. So I thought we might concentrate on funnels a little bit. There's a few kind of uh, top shelf products out there in the marketplace, click funnels, 10 minute funnels, lead pages, those kinds of things. So I thought I'd get uh, the founder of one of those 10 minute funnels, uh, founder Kyle Graham in to talk about the elements of a successful sales funnel. So he's my guest today. But before we get into that, the shameless social proof segment, got another five star review on iTunes. This one's from Jingo Twig five-star review it says useful and immediate chunks of excellent info that you can use straight away get results quickly all in short concise no fluff episodes great work barry episode with jake Hauer, double a plus plus thank you very much jingo twig we appreciate you taking the time to leave a review on itunes and if you want me to read out your review on a future show then head over to itunes and just leave us a review on the active marketer podcast so let's get into this week's chat with Kyle Graham. I'd like to welcome to the show Kyle Graham, founder of 10 Minute Funnels. I saw Kyle recently at an event in Sydney where he filled in at the last minute for a speaker who couldn't make it and gave a fantastic presentation uh, all about sales funnels and his product, 10 Minute Funnels. So had to get him on for a chat. Kyle, welcome. Thanks. Great to be here. I hope you had a good trip back from Australia. Yes, if 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 by good you mean thirty hours long, <laughs> yeah, I had a wonderful trip back. That's right. Yeah, there is no good trip back. There's a only a only bearable trip. Back. <laughs> yeah, bearable, bearable, and That's unbearable. Good, yeah, but no, I had a great time. It was it was good. it was a good trip. Well, I appreciate you and all the rest of the, the, the people at the event making the uh, effort to get all the way down to Sydney. I know it's a long haul for a lot of people. Yeah, had a good. It was fun though seeing seeing Sydney for the first time, the sights, and it went surfing for the first time, which was an interesting experience. So it was all good, all worth it. And what did you think of the surfing? It was well. Let's see. I was able to stand up on the surfboard maybe one and a half times awesome. in the hour and a half period of time we were there. So I spent a lot of time under the water drinking salt water, but it was good to try it for the first time. Yeah, need a little bit more practice though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't we all? Definitely not as easy as it looks. Yeah, exactly. Uh much much uh, that's a good segue into sales funnels. So there you go. Sometimes uh sales funnels are not quite as easy as you look. I think everyone's encountered them where they uh hit some really uh accomplished internet marketer sales funnel and you know, it goes from one page to the next page to the next page and uh, it looks pretty easy, but as you and I both know behind the scenes, it really isn't. So that's what we're going to talk about today, a little bit about sales funnels. But, but just for those listeners who are uh, maybe just starting out with this internet marketing journey, how would you define what a sales funnel is? Cool. Well, now I can, this is much easier for me than surfing is. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's to each his own. And, and, and it's all, it all comes down to the time and experience you have, uh, with what it is you're doing. So anyway, sales, sales funnels to me 
is, well, it can be defined a few ways. If you take the 30,000 foot view, you have like the sales process that all businesses have to go through to acquire a customer and nurture that customer. So that's, I think, the broad view of what a sales funnel is. But particularly what I'm interested in when I think of sales funnels is the online sales funnel. Like when you, everything that happens from when someone comes across your path, so that might be a landing page or maybe an ad they see, from that point all the way through to when they become a customer and then when you nurture them, when they become repeat customers. Um, And so that entire process from that point to the other point, I would call that a sales funnel. All right. And so, yeah, I guess that, that process of taking a stranger to a, to a repeat customer, that's, that's a pretty good way to define it. I guess that, that definition can also be purposely kind of loose and ill-defined because those sales funnels are going to be different for each exactly. business and each business may have more than one way, to, one, one way to skin that cat. There might be a number of different funnels that they have for customers depending on how they kind of, how that customer stumbled upon you. So Exactly. I mean, because every customer is different. Every customer needs a, 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 an experience through the sales process that fits their needs, that answers their problems, that gives them the things they need in order to become a, 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 a buyer. But I think the simple view is that it's a path. You know, it's, it's, it's holding someone by the hand and pulling them through the entire process to where they become, you know, a raving fan, repeat customer. Now, why I think they get complex sometimes is that when you look at sales, when you look at uh, like the best way to turn someone into a customer, like the best way is one-on-one with the person, talking to them, uh, finding out what their their desires are and coming up with a tailored solution and talking to them in that way that answers every single possible um, situation that that particular customer faces. And so the reason why these that some sales funnels end up being complicated is because you're sending people down paths and branches based on um, – their objections based on their desires. And so you, you end up creating a tailored experience for each type of customer. And then when you zoom back, that's why these sales funnels can look kind of complicated because they're branching off into different ways, in different paths, because certain customers require that in order to get them to be a customer. Yeah, and I think that's kind of the goal of, of just marketing on sales and marketing automation in general. I was reading some of these articles last night about trends, you know, what are the trends for the next couple of years? Mm-hmm. And uh, somebody was talking about one-to-one messaging. Now, obviously, you know, yeah. if you've got thousands of customers in your business, one-to-one messaging isn't really <laughs> going to happen. It's not going to be a practical <laughs> thing. But uh, with these these sales funnels and these marketing automation platforms like Infusionsoft and Active Campaign, Entreport, those kind of things, they, um, you know, they're their whole thing is to try and get the most relevant cu- message to the, to the customer at the right time, you know, to exactly. approximate as closely as possible that kind of one-on-one experience with somebody. So you're addressing their particular need at that particular time, just like you said. So Exactly. So say, um, say someone's just got your basic static website with a couple of, uh, you know, product pages or service pages is in a checkout form. Um, what, how do you think they go from that, the standard, uh, here's my website, to um, a, a successful sales funnel? What are some of the elements of a successful sales funnel? Sure, and I think it goes back to what we were just talking about. So when I look at it, and sometimes I have a unique perspective, and and, and, and one of them is that it's all a sales funnel. Like if you have a static <laughs> yeah, website – it is, you know, it's it's a sales process because it because people are coming to your site and eventually some will buy. The difference between that and some of the more um, complex or the more intricate sales funnel is exactly what we were just talking about. The 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 experience that someone who comes on a static brochure website, that's what I like to call them, is that it's a it's a one experience for all kinds of people. And so as a result, you know, if, and you can actually visually picture a funnel of trying to get people through this funnel. A lot of people are going to fall out of that funnel because that single website, it's impossible to address everyone's needs. So the only difference between that and some of the 
intricate funnels is that now with the intricate funnels, is it's, it's that tailored experience. It's branching people off in different paths based on behaviors they've taken. And so the path that one customer ends up taking is unique to that customer. Now, the, the, the end result or the net result is a much more tailored experience. And because of that, it's that one-to-one messaging or as close to it as possible. And then the real tangible results is that your sales, your profits, your conversions, they go through the roof because of that tailored experience. So when you ask, like, what are the elements of a good sales funnel, it's that as close to to a one-to-one relationship as you can possibly get, that's, that's what the elements of a good sales funnel is. And, and we can, of course, get into what that looks like and stuff, but that's the idea, in my opinion. Well, yeah, and you're, and you're right, but I think, where, you know, where do you draw the line between, okay, I'm trying to cater for everybody, totally. and this thing's turned into a giant mess of spaghetti that I can, <laughs> I can barely keep track of. <laughs> I mean, you've got, a, you've got some really intricate funnels built into 10-minute built into funnels there where, you know, it's lots of branching logic and lots of, right. you know, what if the customer does this? Okay, we'll hit them with that. Um, so, you know, where do you suggest yeah. kind of drawing the line between being practical no. and, and trying to cater for everybody? Exactly. And it's a really, really good question. It's one that, that I'm actually very passionate about because the, you have two ends of the spectrum, you know, and, and I think it's going to depend on the market because if you put it this way, if you bring the right person to your website in the first place, and I mean that like you have a market, which is a market that's made up of all kinds of people. And there's a subset of that market that I like to call hyper-responsive. Those are the people that have a propensity to buy pretty much anything you're going to throw at them because the solution you're providing uh, solves their pain point so dramatically well that you're going to have that hyper-responsive customer. So that's my first step, is, is, is attracting those people and detracting the other people to my website. Now, once you have a hyper-responsive person to your website, the intricacies of that funnel is not as important anymore because you now have one profile of a person with very similar desires and require a, a, a simple or path. And so in many cases, and I'm a total advocate of this, in many cases, the intricate funnels are not required at all. So, so, so it, like when, when you look at our system, we have simple funnels and we have intricate funnels because it's going to depend on the situation. Now, we have a process that we go through in order to make it so that it's not this crazy experience where we have a thousand different branches to ta- tailor to everyone because it's not, it's not practical in many cases. So, what we do is we have a process that uncovers the traits of that hyper-responsive customer. So if we had like a whiteboard, I'd draw a big circle around it and I'd call, I'd call it market, the market you're going after. And right in the middle of that market, that bullseye part of that circle is I call the ideal customer. And I, an ideal customer is that hyper-responsive customer. So what we do is be, before we enter a market is we go into the marketplace and we start to attract, this is the market research part, we start to attract a lot of people. And then we determine, again, this is just market research, not sales yet. Uh, we determine what are the traits of a hyper-responsive customer. And then once we uncover those traits, we end up discovering interest buckets. So in other words, the goal is not to create this funnel that's going to cater to a thousand different people's needs. The goal is to cater to the interest buckets of the hyper-responsive customer's needs. And so we end up sometimes coming up with three or four different interest buckets. And that, that's now the four different branches that a, a, a sales funnel uh, goes through. So when we create our sales funnel, that's what we're doing. We, we find a way to put people in the top of the funnel. We do certain things to assess which category or which uh, interest bucket they fit in. And then we design an experience for those interest buckets. And that's a way to get to, that's a way to accomplish two goals. A is to sim- or one is to simplify the sales process so that it doesn't become crazy. But two, it's to still get that that one to one experience because you're talking specifically to an interest instead of yeah an interest that a a, a hyper responsive person a person who has the propensity to buy um, you're talking to that particular person so as a result you get the best of both worlds you get a medium level of 
uh, sophistication with your funnel, but you get the benefits of that tailored one-to-one experience, your conversions go through the roof because you're talking to people who are already likely to buy. And as a result, even when the non-hyper-responsive people come, they're still going to be attracted because you're, you're still meeting their needs. And that's, that's, a, that's like an overview of a five-hour long talk, but, but <laughs> that's the general idea. And it works amazingly well, like amazingly well when you do it that way. Yeah, you bring up a really good point that I think a lot of people starting out with internet marketing, or even ones that have been around for a while, kind of forget is mm-hmm. as much as you think you want to, you don't want to go after every single customer, every Absolutely. single person out there. You know, you really need to to filter a little bit on the front end and come up with like a, you know, as you said, your customer avatar, who's your ideal customer? You know, Mercedes and BMW and those kind of people aren't going out and advertising to everybody in the world. They know who their customer is and they, like you said, they hyper target that particular customer. And, um, I've been guilty of that in the past where you've, you know, someone's going, Hey, you want to, you want to come in and have a chat about, you know, maybe working together? And you're like, sure, with it, you know, without. (laughs) <laughs> without filtering that person at all. And then you go, okay, that just wasted two hours of my time. So Exactly, exactly. And yeah. so the, like one of the things that, yeah, you're right. People try to cater to everyone. So they, so they end up catering to nobody. And so all we do is instead of having a unique path for every single person is we create groups. We just create groups of interest because it, you may have 10,000 people, but in terms of the interest, it may only, it, it may only boil down to three or four. So the whole idea is that, uh, no, you don't want to talk to everyone for everything, but you want, want to segment those people into groups, and it should be groups that surround your ideal customer, and then everything takes care of itself after that. Yeah, very cool, very cool. Uh, well, let's talk about the product for a little bit. Um, it's sure. very, very cool. For those of you who haven't seen it, it's called 10-Minute Funnels. Um, so, Kyle, tell us a bit about um, the motivation behind creating that. It's you know, it's not like you were the, um, you're the only player in that market. So sure. what, what motivated you to say, hey, you know, I can build something better or I can build something really cool? Well, okay, so it, it, there's a couple of things. I can tell you like the genesis of the idea and how it came about as well as the need to do it. Like the, like the tools out there just could not do what we as a company needed, needed to do. But our story goes all the way back to – really it goes back even further, but I won't, I won't tell you my entire life story. But put it this way, I was, I, I, I've been programming since I was eight years old, put myself through uh, – uh, like started designing websites for people, put my Myself through college doing that stuff. And towards the end of college, this was about 11 years ago, um, I needed to find a way to balance my school and my, um, and, and my business. And so what I, what I ended up doing is I was having these clients saying they need help with their website. And so what we did is I just built a quick little tool that helps help regular people design, uh, 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 edit their own website. That way I could focus on my studies and they could be happy. And so I just put it on the web and I said, hey, just go put some, you know, here's a PayPal button, go and do it. So this was the days like before WordPress was popular and there was no real way to, to do stuff online. So our story goes all the way back to then where we built this little tool. It ended up taking off, like just people just started coming out of nowhere to have this power to edit their website. And so anyway, when I, when I graduated from college, I decided to focus on that full time. So long story short, ever since 11 years ago, we've been in this market uh, building these tools. And the only change between then and now is the evolution of the marketplace. These concepts of one-to-one marketing on how they can be applied to online marketing, there's been an evolution. We've only evolved our tool over the years to take advantage of some of those uh, benefits. And so fast forward to today, well, it was really two years ago where we entered the online marketing space, uh, but still as of, you know, it's even still not where it needs to be except for our tool. What, so we ended up creating 10-minute funnels as a way to rapidly get uh, – uh, as a way for people to rapidly get some of these concepts of, uh, uh, of these intricate one-to-one funnels uh, uh, very, very quickly. So we just borrowed from our experience of creating tools to help people build websites, applied it to sales funnels, and the net result is the ability to very rapidly create these these from simple to intricate funnels extremely quickly. And 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 
the reason we wanted to do this is because there, there, there wasn't and still isn't tools that can easily get you to that end result of those hyper-targeted one-to-one like sales messages in an, in an online web experience. It's just not really possible. And so we needed it. Our customers needed it. There was a need. And so we jumped on it. And, and that's how 10-Minute Funnels came about. Yeah, well, there's definitely a need for it. If anyone's ever put to, tried to put together a sales funnel, man, there's a lot of moving parts there that you need. Right. To, you need to kind of orchestrate. It's kind of like herding cats sometimes. You know, you mm-hmm. need this script and that page, and it's got an API connection to this or that. Um, and that's the thing. Like, so, so a lot of people are 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 now becoming aware of what they need to do, but then when they actually go to do it, that's when things fall apart. You're dealing with a webmaster, or you're trying to figure it out on your own, the tech side becomes the major hurdle. And so what we wanted to do is create a software that has, um, that has a lot of this stuff already done and, and it's built into the system so that when you go to create it, we've separated them into the popular sales funnels that you just click on and boom, it's already done for you. You just have to tweak it to meet your needs. So our whole job was to make that part, the tech part, incredibly easy and that's why we call it 10 minute funnels because you can literally go and click a button and get an elaborate or a simple funnel built out from start to finish in 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 a very very short amount of time yeah and i i think you've done a fantastic job in in fulfilling that goal anyone who knows how to basically drive a computer and knows their way around a little bit can log into the product and and just start building it i think the drop drag and drop interface and the visual representation thing is one of the things that really sets it apart from anything else in that you can actually see what you're doing, the whole process, in kind yeah. of one place and move it around and, and change it out a bit. You've got that nice pictorial representation of everything that keeps it keeps the, the end game in your in mind while you're building out the small bits. So yeah, that that was the genesis of the idea of like, well, what if we could model that planning experience uh, visually? So what if you could simply drag over the components of your marketing funnel, your sales funnel, and draw arrows from page to page and connect them as you see it in your head? And what if the code, the magic to make it all work, happened automatically behind the scenes? And that's essentially what we did. So it's two, it's two things. So you, you, you get into the software, especially if you're a beginner, and we provide you with about 30 different marketing funnel templates. Those are the ones that are pre-built. We've observed what works and we've given you them and they're already done. You click a button and it's built for you. Um, And then the other is for the intermediate advanced people who do that big elaborate planning process. All you got to do is just do the planning process in our software and it automatically gets built behind the scenes. And that that's, I think, the real exciting part is that now you can do this stuff without having to think about the technology behind it because it just works so well. All right, so let's say someone's taken the leap. They've got the software. They've decided they're going to start building out some funnels for their business. They've got their ideal customer. Um, what are some of the common mistakes that you see people making when they start uh, building out their first funnels? Well, you know, the, the common mistakes is that a lot of people just jump in and, and, and start going, and, and they don't do the stuff you just said, like finding their ideal customer and stuff like that. Um, it's sad, and I... And I won't say the person, well, no one would know, but I was just at an event, like literally yesterday, um, um, where a guy, and it was, it was kind of a disappointing because he was just getting into the marketing game. Um, he had invested, he, he calculated he invested 700 or more hours in, this, in designing this funnel. And when you look at the funnel, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, it's got all the right aspects, but it completely bombed. And in my opinion, it came down to the fact that he didn't do those early steps, which was figuring out who it is you're trying to talk to, figuring out what those needs are that they have, and then addressing it in the funnel. So what ended up happening is he built this great funnel that had all the right elements in place, but he did not the, – the, the solutions that he was providing and the pain points he was indre- addressing was not matching what, his, what the market – the, the, the pain points and the problems the market actually has. So this is where it comes into, it's great to have a tool like ours that allows you to do this stuff, but the tool is only as smart as you, as you put 
in it. So we'll give you the guru funnels. We'll give you everything you need. But if you don't do the basic steps of, of figuring out your audience and, and who you're targeting and their pain points, you will end up creating a great funnel talking to the wrong person. That's probably the biggest mistake. And we try to address it. We have a funnel in there towards the bottom uh, called the survey funnel. And yeah. it's, a, it's a funnel that allows you to do that, that market research to figure out those problems first. And I'm telling you, my, like if there's anything I could leave our audience with is when you do that first, when you really figure out who you're talking to, you don't even need some of these extra elaborate funnels. You need a basic funnel that addresses those pain points. If you get that part right, the rest becomes so much easier. Yeah, that's right. So as they say, once you've got the starving crowd, it's not hard to sell the hamburger. Exactly. <laughs> right. exactly. And that's all it is, is, is taking a market and figuring out what the starving crowd is and the, the crowd that's willing to spend money to solve that, that, that starvation. You figure that out. Like you, this is the exciting part is, especially if you're a beginner marketer and, you, and you're confused about like, what if I can't write good copy? What if I don't have this? Like a lot of that stuff is just icing on the cake because if you figure out the right person, it's like if someone is starving in the desert, you don't have to have the perfect sales message or the perfect yeah. everything. You just hand them some water and they'll give you whatever you want. And that's the idea. You don't need to be an expert marketer if you do the right steps in the beginning. Yeah, very, very, very true. Yeah, and I know you're always pushing the boundaries of the product because the other day I found the Mad Scientist panel in there, <laughs> which is <laughs> yeah. pretty cool. It's you know it lets you tinker around with some of the more advanced bits uh, of the funnel. Yeah. Very cool. All right, Kyle, well, I think we might wrap it up there. I really appreciate you spending some time with us today, and uh, congratulations on the product. It's uh, it's really fantastic and something that will help out a lot of people. Um, so. What's the best place for people to to engage with you if they want to find out more about Kyle? Sure. I mean, 10minutefunnels.com is really where, where all the magic happens. It's where you can, you know, reach me, reach the software and everything. And I, I'll, I just thought of this as we were talking and I, and I want to kind of leave with this note. Uh, a customer, I don't even know the, their name. We were on a webinar and she put out a, a, a little message that just said, you know, thank you, Kyle. Finally, you've given me the confidence to try. And I, it just really stuck with me because I see a lot of beginners that are very intimidated by this world of marketing. And you hear all these great concepts that sound great in theory, but there's this big obstacle of getting it done. And so I just, you know, it's, it's an honor to try to provide easy ways to allow the regular person to be at the level of an expert in short order because we, you know, we try to package all these stuff so that you have the confidence to try. And if there's anything that, that excites me, it's, it, it's that. Yeah. And, and I would say too, that, you know, you've gone really the, kind of that extra mile in, into making it easy for somebody. So not only is the software easy to, easy to use, but, you know, as soon as you log in, you get, you know, 10 training videos that tell you how to, hey, this is your first step you need to do. And here's a training video for the second step and the third step. So you're really yeah. taking those people who've never done this before and getting them comfortable with it really, really quickly, which I think is uh, uh, a, gr a great way to go. That's the goal. All right, Kyle. Well, thank you very much. I look forward to building out some uh, super intricate funnels <laughs> uh, with your product. And um, once again, thanks for being on, and we'll talk to you next time. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks for the invite, and uh, hopefully it was of help and value. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, Kyle. Big thank you to Kyle there for taking the time to come on and share all his secrets about uh, elements of a successful sales funnel, a little bit about his product, 10-Minute Funnels. And if you want to find all the show notes, you can find them over on theactivemarketer.com forward slash Kyle. And if you want to learn more about funnels and how you can emulate or hack successful funnels, head over to theactivemarketer.com, head over to our blog, theactivemarketer.com forward slash blog. And over on the right in the sidebar, you'll see a little case study about funnels. And if you click on that and have a bit of a read, you have the opportunity to buy a little bit of funnel hacking training there. So head over to the blog and have a look at that if you're interested in how you can create your own successful sales funnels. So until next time, everybody, get out there and design, automate, and scale your business to the next level using marketing automation. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Active Marketer Podcast. You can find the show notes and all the latest marketing automation news over at theactivemarketer.com.